be excited about playing the Welsh Derby, uh, be positive about uh, what we want to put on the park and uh, you know, to pick up points. Um, we know, you know it's a tall order in terms, of the, in terms of the season, but you know we've got to fight tooth and nail for everything for the rest of the season and see where that takes us. How big a test of character is this of the final four games? I think you take that on Friday. Yeah, huge. You know, I think it's uh, for a lot of these young guys in the Osprey fold. It's a you know, test of them, test of everyone around the coaching, the management, and uh, what we're trying to put together. You know, being positive about the future, but being realistic about where we are. You know, looking at you know, the foundations of our game, the expectation that comes with us, coaches, management, and the players within that shirt, and responsibility they've got um, to perform. And clearly, we didn't do that that last week in a derby and. You know, it's a reflection on the season. We can talk about uh, the shoots of hope around the average age of the side. And it is talent, yeah? I mean, there's no, no question about that. And I worked with a lot of elite talent in Wales for a long time, and I really believe in these young players. But, you know, they've also got to just uh, come through with a couple of things, and we've got to support them uh, uh, a little bit differently with the way we're doing things. Griff, uh, last week, what, what happened to the scrum? I know it's not your responsibility, but what were your impressions? Um, there's obviously you know, technical work there around uh, you know, a couple of things around the bind and so forth. And there's individual feedback going there, um, you know. But it's probably a, a summation of not just the set piece, but our lack of action. You look at how sluggish we were in getting into position from kick returns, which is into the game, and you know, there was a side that was uh, hungrier, more dynamic, and had real force around uh, their set piece and the foundation of their game. Um, so we were chasing our tail a little bit, albeit in difficult conditions that you know, historically we managed really well around our kicking game. We certainly had elements where we were positive about what we did, constructed a good try and you know, had a clear-cut opportunity to you know, take a seven-point lead. We didn't do so, but that's neglecting the fact there's foundations of our games which aren't in place. You know, that, uh, that scrum being perhaps won last weekend, but um, that's probably a wake-up call around some aspects of rugby detail. We've got to get better at that, not just last weekend, but the season as a whole, uh, but also around you know, what goes with that in terms of uh, you know, the players themselves, the, the mindset, the approach, and uh, you know, how we support those with you know, those we select and what we put on the park. Are these problems fixable in the short term? You'd hope so in terms of uh, what you coach. You know, I think it's around... Uh, collectively as well, I think it's never about any individual mindset around uh, those just individual battles which you can get into, especially around certain confrontation on the field. It's about doing things collectively. As a team then, just being clear about what you're trying to do, about the work rate that goes with in any game at any level, and uh, we weren't quite there. Um, and that's inexcusable in some ways, uh, but we've got to work our way through, get an action in, in these type of games. Historically, what disappoints me is we've probably got a record in regional rivalry games that's been unparalleled in regional rugby since uh, Steve and I sort of came in. So to only lose our second one is clearly disappointing, but the manner in which we did so in the context of the season we're going through, you know, is something we've got to look long and hard at as a coaching group, but the players have got to come with us in there and vice versa as well. Yeah, come here. Um, is this very much the last chance saloon, Griff, now on Friday with regards to uh, qualification for the Champions Cup? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think you know we've we've blown so many points this year. You know, it's, it's an uphill task as it is, uh, but we've got to take the challenge uh, and head on. And I'm, I'm really excited about going to Rodney Parade. It's a venue we love going to with the atmosphere on it. And you know, forget everything else. It's about you know putting our house in order to perform. You know, and I think we've got you know the players to do so. We feel we've got the structures to do so. It's about um, the frame of our game being a little bit more uh, stable and just being clear and accurate on everything that goes with that. And are you clear in your own mind what you need to do if you are going to get that place? You probably need to win all four with bonus points as well. Yeah, it wouldn't be far off, and even then, you know, we can't control everything. You know, so there's about uh, what we put together, the, the sort of aspects of going somewhere away from home and getting four tries. You know, it's got to excite our group. You know, obviously, we've done it in big European games this year. You know, and we've got full respect for the Dragons. You know, I think you know, this, seeing Kingsley's comments after the game, they feel they can beat everyone in the league as we do. You know, and the results would results suggest otherwise from both sides. But we'll have two good sides going hammer and tongs this weekend. How much of a worry would it be for for the region to, to be in the the, the, uh, the Challenge Cup in terms of like recruiting players or 
retaining players like uh, JJ Engelbrecht that you've got here already, would that be a worry at all? Uh, not overly. I think you know, most of the players who are here buy into the vision we've got of it. You know, as an environment, we spoke after the early season part, and when boys came back from the World Cup, you've got people like you know, Alan Wynn, Tipbrick, Bigger. You know, they say this is a good environment, boys. You know, and for young players to develop with that world class talent is still an exciting thing for anyone who's coming coming in. You've got Fonati here, excited about coming over here. JJ's enjoying his time here, the injuries, the frustration, you know, and another player who's you know, keen to stay. And I think that's uh, been a trend on what we're trying to, trying to build here. Uh, I think you know, the short term, it would be a, a hit more to the ego around you know, coaches, managers, players. That's just got to hurt. And I think we take pride in you know, having high standards which uh, aren't being met in some respects. But also, let's take stock and try and use it as a year, potentially, uh, where, you know, you take breath, you prioritise certain things, you look after players perhaps uh, uh, in a different type of way. Because we've got a season this year where the international players have played no more than six league games. You know, so you've got to reflect on the calendar we've got and how we can manage it and you know, work our way through two competitions better than obviously we have this year, but perhaps in a smoother manner perhaps. I've seen about the, the hit to, uh, to the coaches' egos there. We in the media know that nobody works harder and nobody is more enthusiastic and dedicated than the, the, the new three. Given the fact, though, that you, that this is uh, probably the lowest you've ever been in the league in your tenure. Do, do you feel under pressure from yourselves? That you put on yourselves, or from, or from outside? From ourselves, more than anything, and uh, you know, you know, working in collaboration with players who we're close to, we care for, and uh, you know, that the hours that go in. You're right. I mean, it's. It's a privilege to do what we do, and uh, we represent a uh, great rugby region, great fans, you know, and we really believe in what we do. We look at things tooth and nail, uh, and realise there's valid rugby reasons uh, why we're underperforming. But you know, things that uh, we've got to improve out of sight on. But it's around being clear about what we're trying to build. For me, I'm excited about the young group we have got. You know, I think there's crumbs of comfort in. You know, the way some of the young players are starting to develop some of uh, the understanding of the rugby game. We're bringing through two or three younger backs into the fold this year, getting some experience. You know, I can see a succession plan where we can do that again with a couple more next year, the year after, alongside good recruits. You know, I genuinely think we're building something that's you know, got the foundation of players around 23, 24 years old at the moment around the group. Uh, we have to be positive about it, but realistic about some more substance that's got to go on the field as an Osprey as well. And as a coaching group, you're confident that the, the board sort of share those, the, you know, those views? Yeah, I think Steve is obviously in closer collaboration with uh, Andrew Hawes, it was, Andrew Millwood. You know, I think we asked tough, challenging questions of each other as coaches. I'm sure there'll be challenging questions to us uh, when we mop up uh, where we are in the season, where you're going to take the group. Uh, but we're pretty clear on where we want to build this group towards both collectively you know, and, as I said, individually, we you know, think there's a, a decent succession plan in there. You know, notwithstanding the facts, you know, it's been a, a tough period around Welsh rugby for two or three years and we've been keeping our head above the water for such a long time. You know, I think uh, perhaps things have caught up with us a little bit, but you know, there's no excuses. We look at ourselves first and foremost and what we're doing uh, and you know, try and apply ourselves around a summer's work that's uh, you know, got a degree of consistency about it. And, a calendar as well, which is you know, looking after you know our senior players, but also the windows where we can integrate players better as well. And hopefully this season, then you could look back and, and this would be a, a blip. Potentially, you know, I think there's you know, been some exciting moments around this year. You look at the calendar as it was, you know, early on, you know, we were in the races, we put ourselves then on the back foot. I think we did you know reasonably well coming back from a World Cup period. We were on a real good run around the league. Uh, Europe as well, we were more than competitive. The Exeter loss, where again we were beating all ends up, was a crushing blow. But then we managed to come back from that with some real positive signs, beating Munster away, Edinburgh, Kings. We had to come back in the Six Nations window to win. But then playing reasonably well out in Connacht, Leinster, lose both games again, put us on the back foot. Uh, but still coming back then from a boys coming back from the international campaign, you're in good spirits, think you can, you know. You know take the Scarlets at home, but they've done a job on us. And again, we are where we are, but you know, there's uh, so many peaks and troughs, um, but around the season, it's coming back from setback after setback, and we uh, haven't been able to do so consistently well. A couple on the injury front, uh, Ali Wynne-Jones and uh, Justin Tipperick, the latest on them? Uh, both, uh, obviously Justin has been uh, resting up and uh, 
You know, it's been obviously no part of any practical work we're doing. Alan Wynn is on a return to play protocol now with uh, working with the medical and conditioning staff. Um, but obviously not putting a time frame on either really in terms of the calendar is easier to manage in terms of a week on here and then a week off. You know, but we'll see where we are post Dragons going into Treviso and you know see where we where we can take it with both those players. And finally, just a, a wider around the game. Um, Andrew Hawke came out with some interesting uh, stuff this week, uh, and he was in the, one of the news, Sunday newspapers that um, the Welsh regions could possibly uh, join the Super 18, making it the Super 22. As, as a rugby man, what are your thoughts on that? Could that work? It's not the moment the practicalities of, of the calendar as it is, but you know I think we've got to explore these things, and uh, obviously I think we've you know, Andrew Hawes in the position to be able to do so, having the expertise, knowledge, and contacts around the game and moving position, that we're right to explore that. The red flag for us is the money going into the, the English game and the French game, and uh, you know we're potentially you know Celtic sides are getting left behind, so you know we're wise to explore all options. And as a rugby man, I mean there's. Uh, a product there which you know, obviously people can buy into and uh, you'd be excited to be a part of it but you know first and foremost let's uh, deal with the uh, Welsh rugby. And finally despite the tough season why your enthusiasm is totally undim undimmed um, what have you learned this season personally as a coach you, in fact you possibly learned more this season than in the more successful seasons of the past have you? Yeah in some ways you learn a lot more about players where they are as I said we've uh, you know, coming through a, a World Cup period for the first time and, you know, and having to prepare for that and reflecting on that, but also how we perhaps build a squad through these periods as well. And knowing that we're young and how you supplement those youth um, with uh, what you recruit and when and how you bring players through, I think is something you know, I feel really confident we've got a keen eye on doing so. And I'm excited by where we're taking the group next. You know, but also looking at last year, we were a try away from you know, being top of the league, if you look at uh, the last game of the season, you finish third and we get a lot of plaudits. It's possibly, you know, and I think, you know, players, coaches, managers alike, we've got to ask the question, we have stood still, we've gone back in some ways, reasons why. And, uh, you know, for us, you know, players, you know, did we think, ah, yeah, we've actually, you know, ridden the fact that we've lost some British Lions and come through it. Yeah, we've got young players, we can do this, that and the other, without uh, actually taking care of, you know, some of the real elements of the game that make a difference and I think uh, you know that's a reality for us as coaches is uh, getting the basics done more efficiently and the players you know who, who've got to uh, walk before they can run and I think you know, we've got to manage that as coaches and what we expect from players and how we balance sides out in certain weeks. Griff Reece, honest and insightful as ever, thanks for your time. Thanks Phil. Griff, uh, how is Justin and Mike be back in the Tough to call. I mean, he was uh, in the office uh, last Friday, you know, and he's had you know, a tough old week of it in terms of uh, just being inactive at home and, you know, and really not being comfortable getting out and about and not putting any pressure on him having to d do anything but sitting on the sofa. So that's, uh, you know, as uh, people have had in the past around these sort of things, you've got to be, you know, really wary and sit back and look at the long term betterment of these players. So we're not even putting any thought process around the next game for when Justin can be, you know, and maybe, you know, we just uh, sit tight and, and see the season out and uh, get to the summer then. What was it that serious? It looked a particularly heavy compassion. Yeah, well, yeah, a fair hefty blow and, uh, you know, yeah, hospital for the evening and, as I said, nothing uh, in terms of active recovery for the fair while. Um, we just, yeah, we'll sit tight. What interest did he actually put so far? Probably not like the way. Yeah, no, it's a uh, head injury. What about the top of the board is your selection at 10 going to be this Friday and then after? Yeah, I mean, it will, it will be tough. Um, there's aspects of Sam's development, Sam Davis's development I've really enjoyed this year. You know, I've enjoyed coaching him and taking on some of our attacking messages because he's moving really efficiently, bringing others into play around the attacking game. Um, Whilst also learning uh, that and we know, you know he's got the skill set to run, pass or kick at any given time, you know that's always exciting me, but this perhaps brought others into his game a little bit more efficiently for us. The balance for, around us, and this is perhaps goes back to what I was saying about where we were as a side last year, collectively we probably had a good cohesion around backs and forwards and understanding 
with them, how we were kicking and playing and uh, you know, created some good stuff around face play. This year, uh, we've actually kicked less this year and probably played a little bit more, statistically that will show you. Uh, and we're doing a little bit more around our kick return and some of our set piece attack does excite me when uh, uh, we've had Sam there recently. But, you know, we've got obviously someone like Dan Bigger who's imperious in other parts of the game. You know, so we've got a good little competition around uh, certain themes of the game which they can challenge each other on as well. Uh, around their passing accuracy, you know, some of where they can kick the space and beat defenders. But fit in where we're trying to uh, pressure the opposition but also bring the best out of others. You know, so it, it might be any given week. You know, occasionally we want them both on the park as well. You know, so there's things that we're going to you know, explore through as we go through the summer, notwithstanding the fact there's inter international commitments as well. You know, and Dan has obviously played uh, no more than half a dozen games for us this year in the league. I think four or five potentially max. So you know, it's the consistency of uh, what you build up in training as well is important. Great for you, watching every night. Yeah, yeah, religiously. I know it's the Chiefs, they sort of thing too, was it after? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, Richard Fussell was a stalwart for us as a 15, and we, you know, we really enjoyed aspects of, of his play. But we wanted to get Sam on the field, and we played him through a European campaign at 15 and a long run of league action because, you know, it's that you know, two sided attack, having the balance of your left foot, right foot, you know, and it, it, it does excite me. There's aspects of that we do do now around other players on the field but you know there's uh, you know, football ability in both of them and there's the the leadership and the comms which you tend to get from two tens on the field so it does interest me it's just the fit of when and how as well around uh, the opposition you play. What about the Dragons threats? Where were the main threats this week? I think you, you tend to go to Rodney Parade you know and I think they had a a good block of work prior to playing Munster. Munster away, I think, was the culmination of a, lot, a long block of rugby, and they've tailed off a little bit there. But some of their home games, Glasgow in particular, always combative around the contact area. Um, but looking at threats around, you know, Hallam Amos has come back in and taken two fine tries on the weekend. I think Ashton Hewitt has had a good breakout season, which has been exciting to see. Uh, obviously, Tyler Morgan back into the mix. So I'm seeing two good football insights. You know, I think. Uh, you know, both sides, you know, occasionally perhaps uh, put, put the ball a little bit early. We've been guilty of in the past, but that's the challenge for where and how we do that. And then the same for the Dragons, you know, but also looking at you know, world-class talent like Toby Falato is there. You know, and I think, to be fair, you know, they've got a front five as well, which is uh, starting to get it right more often than not as well. And they've got a European game to look forward to as well. So, you know, they're despite a run of form which is indifferent, you know, they'll be fully motivated and uh, as I said it should be a captivating challenge.